Hey folks, Alex Jones here reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Coming up, of course, is Aaron Dykes tonight uh, sitting in with a lot of key information. Dealing with Homeland Security going ahead and moving forward to put up hidden microphones and cameras in uh, street lamps all over the country with AI systems recording everybody. That's coming up. Also, like something out of Idiocracy, they now take your children. If you accidentally drink a milk or a sand or eat a sandwich when you're at the grocery store buying groceries, as we've all done, and then forget to pay for it when you're going through the line, your kids are gone. It's over. The state is a predatory group that wants to prey upon you. It's a narcotics trafficking, murdering group of criminals that bring the drugs in and hope you use them so they can throw you in their private prison. That's how modern slavery works. But I'm done talking about that. Here's my big stack of news, okay? Here's my big stack of news. We're going to put some of these articles over. They're reporting that Greece talking about having a referendum on totally selling out their sovereignty to the EU banking cartel could bring down the euro. That's how the banksters get you into a crisis like our 2008 crisis and then hold the public hostage for tens of trillions of dollars or they'll create a depression. And they threatened martial law, war on the streets a few months ago of Greece, who supposedly owes $100 billion, which is really mainly derivatives that Papandreou, the former Goldman Sachs operative, and his finance minister signed the country onto. Well, after six months of rioting and the rest of it and VAT taxes being put in to pay for the austerity, as you know, last week they passed the euro debt deal, which is $1.4 trillion, oh, for $100 billion. Grisos. No, that's just a way to blame it on the people. Uh, and they're going to leverage it out at least three times to close to $5 trillion, which is just money given to the big six mega banks who've openly said they want an undemocratic system now in Europe uh, and austerity. This is the new dictatorship of the EU. And, and all these countries want to have referendums. Most of the countries have never been able to have referendums. Their governments just sign them into this. England was signed into the euro. And now the, over 80% of the public are demanding, and David Cameron said two weeks ago, the Prime Minister, he's not going to allow them to even have a referendum. So we've got uh, that going on right now. And here's the big news. Here's why I'm doing this special report that will uh, air right at the beginning of InfoWars Nightly News this evening. It's because uh, Zero Hedge was reporting, and I actually went and looked it up. It's in the Athens newspapers. It's true that Papandreou is talking about firing the entire Joint Chiefs of Staff of Greece because they're not going to go along either with the bankster takeover. We know Papandreou's in the banker's pocket. Or has Papandreou had a change of heart because he knows rebellion is on and the collapse of Greece and, and, and a total overthrow of the government, which a lot of experts say is about to happen. And he's trying to just stave it off to have a, quote, referendum and then try to steal the vote to get it. Or has he woken up and the military wasn't going to go along or something, and so he's about to kick them out. I mean, I mean, you're looking at major coup, counter coup. We're not sure what's going on right now, but it's wild. We're talking about the collapse of the euro or the birth of open world government, as the Pope calls for a bank of the world run out of Europe that stops the evil, corrupt bankers, but is run by the evil, corrupt bankers. You got Time Magazine calling for a bank of the world. All this stuff is happening. Uh, all this stuff is uh, taking place right now, and it's so incredible. There's a quickening happening. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gearing up for the big 24-hour plus hour transmission that kicks off at InfoWars.com with all these guests. We'll have video streams, audio streams, free to the public. In fact, it's already up right now, and the prelude to that, the InfoWars Nightly News is posted at InfoWars.com and the 24-hour marathon section article. We're also streaming it at Justin TV, Ustream, and Mara on our own system, free to the public, uh, because this is a big media event with a whole bunch of guests uh, joining us. It's going to be extremely powerful uh, information. So that is all coming up with that information, but these are the insane times, and it's just going to get crazier and crazier and crazier as open world government is pushed uh, on everybody, and it's just mind-blowing to see this happening. In fact, I'm coming to a red light. Maybe I can just show you some of these articles. I mean, look at this. Federally funded street lights capable of recording conversations are well again in telestreet system now being installed in major cities with your tax money. Texas is launching taser drones with Homeland Security funding. I mean, it's just criminal government going wild. Wall Street firms spies on protesters and tax-funded 
Center. AP, pregnant mom, sandwich arrest was horrifying. CPS took her kid. No criminal record. Uh, law bans cash for secondhand transactions. And then I've got Papandreoff calls for this special election uh, referendum because it, the Greeks will have EU enforcers making sure all the new taxes they raise, sales tax, VAT, is being paid because the public's rebelling against it. And they don't owe it like Iceland uh, or Ireland. I mean, that's what's incredible is Iceland finally said no after a year and they got the documents and over 90% of it was owned by the very banksters that were telling them it's your national debt when it's not. It's the derivatives. Make them take a total haircut. We don't owe this. You know, the globalists take a $100 billion haircut or 50% of their bonds from Greece and then they get $5 trillion in exchange. I mean, it's just, it's just, you're always told it's one thing and it's another. Okay, that's it. The main nightly news is coming up with Aaron Dykes, and again, it's free for everybody. Spread the word about this. It's got to be listeners supported so we can pay for the infrastructure and, 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 and the crew and everybody who's doing a wonderful job. But and we're beta testing it for television right now, so you're really funding the true revolution in alternative media. But for you know, the, 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 the next three days, we're going to uh, have it free in the video box at prisonplanet.tv. It's up there right now. Uh, at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, the box is up there right now where you can watch all the shows, including today's live radio show I did, Slash TV. Um, you can find it. It's all over the site. Spread the word about it. We had 3.5 million views when Aaron and Watson were... Um, Aaron Dykes and Paul Watson were at Bilderberg this year covering it, just on the Justin TV channel. We want to get millions watching for the money bomb extravaganza of information warfare against the tyrants. Okay, folks, uh, that's it um, for this transmission. Uh, more with Aaron Dykes coming up, but again, spread the word about the money bomb coming up. Uh, that is this Thursday, 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Mountain, 10 a.m. Um, no, no, 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, 10 a.m. Mountain, and it's going to go for 27 hours from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. the next day at the end of the radio show. And I uh, couldn't do it without all your help and support out there. We're really fired up about this, so please spread the word about it. The globalists are coming down on us like a ton of bricks, but for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You are the resistance. If you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. Thanks, Alex. And this is the InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight is Tuesday, November 1st, 2011. I'm Aaron Dyke sitting in. And of course, the top story tonight has to do with Greece and Papandreou's announcement calling for a referendum sometime early next year. But many people in his government believe that the government itself may not last. Many have called for Papandreou to be ousted. They've called for new elections. And so the Daily Mail is reporting that the Greek referendum could kill off the European Union as well. Uh, many people are questioning if Greece votes no on the referendum, uh, that it would trigger a default, which would unravel the entire Euro Eurozone and the Euro itself. And so everyone is upset. They're saying that Greece political class has failed to even persuade the Greeks of the need for spending cuts and tax rises, let alone convince them they've got the detail right. Don't let them tell you the cuts aren't real, that austerity isn't being implemented in Athens. It has been dictated by the EU and IMF and goes on to discuss how the popular mandate, how a no vote could unravel the entire EU project. Already, labor peer Lord Sole is calling it the economic equivalent of the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand in Sarajevo in 1914. This is a banker-created banker crisis, uh, but it could have big repercussions for all the world's markets. Just the announcement of this referendum has triggered uh, market plunges across the board. Meanwhile, Greece, uh, Papandreou in Greece, has replaced military chiefs, a number of high-level uh, members of the military, including the heads of general staff, Army, Navy, Air Force, and discharge a dozen or so other officers. And that really is part of a larger coup, counter coup within Greece. We're not sure exactly what's going to happen, but they are reshuffling here. Uh, the, the majority for the Socialist Party is down to a razor-thin majority of only two members. Uh, one member just declared himself independent today, uh, drawing that margin even closer. And really, everything could hinge on this, even though it's a Baker-created uh, 
crises. And Papandreou himself, a Bilderberg attendee, would sure like to know what they discussed there uh, as these bigger problems loom. And of course, Herman von Rumpy, the EU president, and Jose Manuel Barroso, also uh, head of the EU, uh, are pretty upset about it, and they're sort of implying that we trust Greece will honor the commitments they made in this deal last week. But, of course, the Greek people are up in arms about it, completely upset. And that's why many believe Papandreou is doing this just as a political stunt, a ploy to maintain power, as there are calls for him to step down and a whole lot more. We'll keep an eye on that. Alex will be covering it in detail tomorrow. In other news... Operation Armas Crusadas has been revealed to be a Department of Homeland Security run. Uh, Janet Napolitano herself's own version of Mexican arms trafficking. This one openly with cooperation from the Mexican government. Uh, the Attorney General himself is known to know about this. You saw her testimony last week. We're going to play it here in just a moment where she denied any knowledge of the Fast and Furious scandal and really refused to talk about anything related to it at all. Now, we know there's all kinds of operations going on like this, so-called stings, where they're really just arming the Mexican drug gangs, allowing them uh, to ship in the cocaine and other drugs. We know about the Sinaloa cartel in particular being given alleged government uh, immunity. And, of course, the corrupt Mexican government and the corrupt United States government are in on all these cartel activities. And, of course, they have numerous smokescreen operations like Fast and Furious designed to look like they're targeting the drug gangs while only fueling the problems and making them worse, among other reasons, to target the Second Amendment. And that's Jan Napolitano. Uh, let's play that clip now. When did you learn of Fast and Furious for the first time? Uh, I learned of it uh, after the death of Agent Terry. And when did you learn that gun walking was part of Fast and Furious? Uh, I would say uh, sometime between his death and the early spring. To your knowledge, is ever, has anyone ever communicated or did anyone communicate with Mexican authorities that guns were being allowed to cross our border into Mexico in contravention of their gun laws? Uh, I can only speak for uh, communications uh, that I know of, and I know of no such communications. Correct, yeah. So someone at the Department of Justice had to know about Fast and Furious for the T3 to ever have been approved, correct? I, I just can't comment. I don't know that there was a T3 approved in Fast and Furious. If there were a T3 approved in Fast and Furious, and, and there were, the Department of Justice would have had to have known about it, correct? I'm going to leave that for your own investigation, sir. I'm just not going to comment or go beyond what I know. And what I know is that after the death of Agent Terry, uh, uh, it, the Fast and Furious label uh, became apparent at, and we became knowledgeable about it. Um, obviously, there were problems with the operation. Obviously, it did not succeed, and, uh, and the Inspector General has that under uh, uh, investigation right now. So. And that's Napolitano last week saying, I'm not going to cooperate with your questions. Just try to get past the national security wall and figure out what's going on. Of course, it was also revealed that uh, there were similar operations under the Bush era. And really, this is just classic Iran-Contra type behavior that's been going on uh, in the shadowy parts of the national security state for years. Now, here's a clip from Napolitano back in March of 2009 uh, where they're discussing this exact kind of gun trafficking program. But our department has a very broad mission, and we have to be able to multitask. Uh, and as we multitask, one of the uh, things that has happened, uh, one of the changes in the threat environment has been what is going on in Mexico. How success do you expect to be in this effort to clamp down on the trafficking of power going into Mexico? Several things. Uh, one is, first of all, you've got to interdict the arms. You've got to stop them from going into Mexico. Uh, uh, we're coordinating with Mexico because they can do more uh, by way of southbound screening uh, on their side of the border. Uh, but then the Department of Justice moving uh, their agents uh, down there, uh, as David said, and increasing tracing. Uh, that will help us identify who, are, who, who is putting those arms uh, uh, into the arms, those, those guns uh, uh, into the arms of the traffickers uh, moving south. Uh, and uh, out of that, uh, there uh, can reasonably be seen more prosecution of actual arms dealers who are intentionally and knowingly uh, putting arms into the hands of the smugglers. 
And so there you have it. They're essentially caught red-handed, but my guess would be not much will happen unless they plan to target the entire national security state. And we'll see. But now, meanwhile, Big Sis uh, acknowledges that Homeland Security is now monitoring Twitter for signs of social unrest. Uh, so all the admitted criminal activity in government, but instead it's always on the population, uh, guilty until proven innocent. And here you have Paul Joseph Watson's article discussing how the federal agency is concerned about riots breaking out in the U.S. And essentially following the Arab Spring, they hope to now monitor the activities of not yet proven guilty, uh, no reason to believe they're involved in criminal activity, people on Twitter, Facebook, and other social network sites to find out if they're engaged in so-called uh, subversive activities or just economic riots and so forth. And, you know, it's just more of the police state coming down on the people as the government's increasingly proved uh, to be criminal itself, just as we've already covered how Louisiana is banning cash transactions for secondhand goods. Uh, they also uh, recently upheld in the Supreme Court uh, that Louisiana police can uh, supposedly search cars on a hunch, that they don't need actual probable cause, that it's enough just to believe someone's criminal. Now, the case they use here, the person was found to have drugs in the car, so it somehow seems to reinforce the idea that a preemptive search is okay. What it's really doing is empowering police. And getting back to this cash ban on secondhand transactions, uh, I've heard the lawyer quoted in this story, Thad Ackle Jr., talking about how it was the law enforcement lobby and uh, kind of the national security state lobby who pushed this bill through, uh, slipped it under the radar, and kept it from really being questioned. And the problem really is the language of the bill. It's so open-ended, it creates a slippery slope to where basically anyone engaged in secondhand transactions will be placed under suspicion. There's already laws and regulations uh, forcing, you know, uh, pawn shops as well as uh, wire trade stores, uh, yeah, we have a clip here. They give a check or a cashier's money order or a electronic. One of those three mechanisms is used. Hardy says the bill is targeted at criminals who steal anything from copper to televisions and sell them for a quick buck. We are being targeted for something that we shouldn't be. Besides nonprofit resellers like Goodwill along with garage sales, the language of the bill encompasses stores like the Pioneer Trading Post and flea markets. Now, really the whole idea behind this bill was supposedly to target copper thieves. Uh, you've seen it reported on the Drudge Report and other places, but really copper thieves can only sell those wires to a few places, and those places already require you to provide identification uh, that could be used by law enforcement in the case of thievery, what it really does is just crack down on regular people uh, trying to make money off ordinary transactions, garage sales, antiques, and the rest of it. It's very dangerous language, and we should keep an eye on that. Now, we also have a clip from the earlier ruling that a hunch is somehow enough to search a car in Louisiana. And I don't think the Supreme Court has opened any bigger door than that was there before. They reaffirmed what the New Orleans police officer did was correct. Police say this ruling changes nothing, but local criminal defense attorney Kirk Piccioni feels differently. I would imagine that this is going to result in more searches, uh, more arrests, more investigatory stops. Piccioni says that this allows an opinion or a hunch of an officer the right to search a vehicle and apply it in court. So therefore, somehow a hunch is enough to violate the Fourth Amendment. Meanwhile, you also have heard about the pregnant mom who says the sandwich arrest was horrifying. She says she accidentally walked out of the store without paying for a sandwich. Her and her husband were arrested and their kid was seized by child welfare, welfare services who say that's the automatic response. So you see again how the system is set up for petty crime, for no crime at all, to take children, to place ordinary people under suspicion. And uh, that child was returned, but really only because the couple went to the media about the terrible incident. The store says they really weren't trying to target the child. They feel bad about the way it turned out, but they're still not sure if they might prosecute her, even though it's a misdemeanor charge for fourth-degree theft. It was never our intent to separate a mother from her child. That was a very unfortunate consequence to the situation, Huffton said. We understand the outrage. We are concerned about how this was handled. But you see the larger child welfare system, CPS, 
uh, just ready to snatch and grab kids for any reason at all. Any suspicion placed on parents can be used as justification to take those kids, and then getting them back is the hard part. And it's just tragic, and the system is obviously ramping up again. I think we have another quote from that as well. The pregnant mom says, I got completely hysterical. I went to the bathroom and threw up. That was when they took the kid. Lezinski called the incident so horrifying it seemed to escalate and no one could say this is too much. Now the couple offered to pay for the sandwich but the store said that was not good enough. Uh, and really it's kind of reminiscent of the direction that uh, the movie Idiocracy showed satirically uh, that society was headed towards. That's the Mike Judge film. Your account has been charged. Your balance is zero. Please what? come back when you can afford oh, to make no, a purchase. No. I'm sorry you're having come trouble. On. Starving. This should help you calm down. Please come back when you can afford to make a purchase. Your kids are starving. Carl's Jr. believes no child should go hungry. You are an unfit mother. Your children will be placed in the custody of Carl's Jr. So somewhere between the corporate state takeover of the state and the bureaucracy, uh, you know, poor mothers have their children taken away because they allegedly can't provide for them because they got angry at the machine. Satirical look at where our society really is basically headed. We're going to go to break now and come back with a whole lot more of police state news, how the corrupt Wall Street cronies who work with government uh, are not under suspicion and work directly with police to spy on protesters while ordinary citizens are cracked down upon over and over. We'll be back in just a moment on the InfoWars Nightly News. Don't forget the November 3rd money bomb coming up in a day and a half. We need your support, and that broadcast, 24 hours plus, will be free for everyone to watch. So tune in and spread the word. Ron Paul, a visionary who predicted the financial crisis, a leader with a plan to solve it. The Paul Plan? Balance the budget. Cut a trillion dollars year one. Eliminate five federal bureaucracies. End the foreign wars and nation building. Rein in the Federal Reserve. Pay down the debt. Cut taxes to create jobs. Ron Paul, a plan to restore America now. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there, InfoWars.com. Our mission at InfoWars.com is to audit the Fed, abolish the Fed, restore the Constitution, abolish the TSA, restore the Second Amendment, restore the Constitution, restore the Republic. And if you believe in those goals, then it is your free will, responsibility, and honor to spread the word about our operation and to donate to the 2011 money bomb. For many years, I tried to basically stay small, make my films, do my radio show, but it grew and grew and grew. Think about how a money bomb that Listener started four years ago led to us being able to move into this bigger office. A later money bomb helped us expand into the empty warehouse next door. And in the last year, we have built the TV studios and put the equipment in and are now doing a nightly news show every night at seven o'clock that we're now beta testing and getting ready for television. Right now going out to members at prisonplanet.tv and then reaching millions as it spills out onto YouTube and other systems. Help us go to the next level. Not reaching 15 million a week, but reaching 30, 40, 50 million a week. Our growth curve is exponential, but we need to hit our afterburners and turbocharge History is happening now. The war for human liberty against total dehumanization is on now. Join us Thursday, November 3rd at InfoWars.com. We're going to have a 24-hour-plus live transmission with guests and interviews starting at 11 a.m. and running into my next radio show the next day. 
We're going to have a huge lineup of liberty-loving patriots from all over the world joining us. It's going to be amazing. And this money bomb is going to have a lot of new things added to it that's going to make it even more powerful than past years. So please donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb or simply spread the word about the Money Bomb. Stand with InfoWars.com and my incredible crew and all of our other supporters and help us get the word out even more. The ball is in your court. The rest is up to you. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2011, November 3rd. It kicks off 11 a.m. Visit the website at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb. We are back on the InfoWars Nightly News, and again, I'm Aaron Dyke sitting in for Alex. He'll be back tomorrow, and the InfoWars Money Bomb is coming up very soon, so stay tuned for that important marathon broadcast. We're going to have all sorts of very interesting and powerful guests on that. But what we're really talking about today is what happens when the police state prepares for the clampdown on the people. And we talked earlier about Big Sis' plans to monitor Twitter and the rest of the social network for uh, supposed signs of coming economic riots, but they've really been planning for these economic riots openly since 2008. The U.S. Army War College wrote a paper preparing on it, and so we wanted to show you now footage from the Depression-era riots where that engineered crisis facilitated by the policies of the Federal Reserve led to a crackdown on the people. And so here you see police beating back the crowds. They're upset because of all the job clamped down and really what was a uh, restriction on the currency. And there were open abuses here. Today we see them in the New York streets with the Occupy protesters and across the whole Occupy movement. But that's just the beginning because as we see an even greater clampdown on the economy as things really begin to unravel, whether it's from this Greek situation or whatever else is about to come, we're going to see more of this kind of thing. It's shocking. It's scary. And uh, it's something we thought was behind us with the Great Depression. But we're in the midst of it again. And there's that footage. It's also up on Infowars.com. But with that in mind, uh, Counterpunch has covered how Wall Street firms spy on protesters in a tax-funded center. And they're talking about the synthesis of the NYPD uh, and many of the Wall Street firms, who all the anger is directed at in this Occupy Wall Street movement, and who are under investigation for all their fraudulent policies and the rest of it. At least 700 cameras scour the Midtown area and also relay live feeds into the downtown center where low-wage uh, law enforcement officers sit alongside high-wage personnel from those Wall Street firms who are currently under at least 51 federal and state corruption probes. And this is something they've been working on since at least 2009, when Bloomberg uh, talked about the Midtown Manhattan Security Initiative. And it's really this supposed high security ring uh, where they could follow suspected people, people who haven't maybe committed a crime yet but look suspicious, or they want to follow people of a certain profile. Meanwhile, the real criminals are on Wall Street. We know who a lot of them are, and the rest of them should be investigated, but the police are busy working with those Wall Street people to keep an eye on what may amount to petty crime. Sure, there's murders and the rest of it going on in New York City, but why is it focused on the financial district? It's because they knew these riots were coming. And you've also got Wall Street corporations renting their own NYPD unit to spy on protesters and to beat back protesters, basically. And it's found that for a measly fee of $37 per hour per officer, you can rent uniformed on-duty NYC cops. Goldman Sachs and the New York Stock Exchange, among others, have been frequent customers. And this article found that they were spending somewhere on the order of $11 million uh, per year in the year 2011 for this kind of private-public security partnership. These are taxpayer-funded cops and any alleged abuses that may occur while they're monitoring protesters and the rest of it would be paid for by taxpayers uh, if it went to trial and, the, and so forth, but they benefit these corporations who are under the eye of 
ordinary people upset about these economic policies, whether or not they have the right analysis or the right idea. And meanwhile, you have L.A. Sheriff calling photojournalism a suspicious activity. There's been at least two people detained and searched for photographing in L.A., uh, one of them photographing turnstiles on the L.A. Metro, and, and asked, was he planning to sell the photos to al-Qaeda? And, and then uh, the officer threatened to put his name on the FBI's hit list and basically intimidated him into believing he'd be followed and bothered every time he went anywhere, tried to fly, travel, the rest of it. Sean Nee says he was detained and searched for photographing turnstiles uh, on the L.A. Metro and that the arresting deputies asked if he planned to sell the photos to al-Qaeda and threatened to put his name on the hit list. And it goes on in an extended quote where the... Uh, Officer Gelfi said, I want to know who you are. I want to know why you're taking pictures on the subway system. Al-Qaeda would love to buy your pictures, so I want to know if you're in cahoots with Al-Qaeda to sell those pictures to them for terrorist purposes. That's a crime, you understand? When Nee again said he was committing no crime, Gelfi told Nee he was being detained until he's determined he hasn't committed a crime. So guilty until proven innocent for photographing. This has happened to me at the Kansas City outside the Federal Reserve there. Uh, and on dozens of other occasions, and I know many, many photographers who've been harassed for this kind of behavior. Uh, and we actually have footage in Fall of the Republic, I think we're going to be able to play that here in a moment, where they target law enforcement officers through the Homeland Security apparatus and tell them to focus on photographers who may be suspicious because they could be working with terrorists. State and local officers are in a great position to collect important information on terrorists and their allies. And the Terrorist Screening Center stands ready to help you. This video, produced by Homeland Security, is required viewing for all departments in the U.S. And with the teamwork of local, state, and federal law enforcement, we have an excellent opportunity to see the picture and solve the puzzle before these terrorists can strike again. State, county, and city police now take their marching orders directly from DHS and FEMA. The videos and training manuals turn peace officers, once guardians of the Republic, into secret police. See way down there? There's a woman taking photos of the dam. Someone called 911 and reported a suspicious person. As you guessed, she's gonna be a category three hit. And since it's very important that we don't let her know that we know, both the dispatcher and the officer need to make sure she doesn't hear the radio traffic. Stand by. If I could ask you to wait right here, please. Sure. As you can see, they're training uh, law enforcement officers, security, whomever, to just freak out at the sign of any camera, assume it's suspicious and somehow working with terrorism. You've also seen reports for years that Alex has reported on, uh, and it's in this video, too, where ordinary stuff, Levi, jeans, maps, binoculars, camping gear, scuba gear, it's all considered suspicious, and citizens are to be regarded as potential criminals no matter what, uh, even though Al-Qaeda, if it even exists, is at best a Fast and Furious-style scandal. From 9-11 to the rest of it, our troops are overseas, under harm's way, 3,000 people died, trillions of dollars spent on these wars, and there's no provable Al-Qaeda, but all the American people are to be suspect. Uh, it's all part of the domestic extremist agenda, and now they're actually harassing really regular reporters uh, in this story. It's up on Infowars.com and Courthouse News Service. So photography is not the only activity explicitly protected under the First Amendment that continues to be undermined uh, by police officers who've been told to expect the worst from people who've not committed a crime once again. Now, in the continuing Occupy protest movement, we have video right here of at least two police provocateurs in Oakland who were caught posing as protesters. You see them on the left as a protester and on the right in the police lineup. Uh, another gentleman here, if you could call him a gentleman. And why are they even infiltrating? These people have been peaceful. They haven't done anything. They have a right to speak out about their grievances. But this is what you begin to expect in a society that's unraveling for economic reasons. It's a clampdown from the police state. Uh, they've given rationales and reasoning to good police officers, other people in law enforcement and so-called security. But really, it's a systematic clampdown on the people as they take over everything, as they prepare for austerity or whatever else they have in mind. You've seen the footage from the Great Depression. I really hope that's not where we're headed. 
but uh, there's reason to think that. Meanwhile, Homeland Security continues to ramp up its paranoid uh, surveillance with new uh, spy streetlights. Paul Watson writes again about the federally funded streetlights capable of recording conversations. Uh, you saw his report earlier in the week on the Drudge Report and other websites about the IntelliStreet system that's being installed in major cities, and it's definitely Orwellian. This is right out of 1984, literally. You can see it has wireless, it has a computer application, it has a speaker, uh, it has visual recording and these little banners to put up emergency messages. And Homeland Security admits, and they admit in the video that they pulled out of embarrassment, that they can put emergency broadcast on here and they can spy on people, monitor populations surrounding the light poles and a whole lot more. Uh, now it bears some relation to the talking CCT cameras that were announced in the UK back in 2007 that would bark orders at people uh, who, for instance, didn't throw away their trash, trying to curb so-called antisocial behavior and the rest of it. And you also probably remember how the talking CCT cameras accused the wrong person. Uh, that's just part of it. But really, it's an embarrassing minority report style clampdown on people who have not committed a crime. Now, here's the press release from IntelliStreet's Big Brother or Big Idea. What IntelliStreet's system is designed to do is simply make our streets safer, more energy efficient and smarter while being informative and entertaining. It's not meant to be a Orwellian Big Brother clampdown, even though it's just like the telescreens in that system and the hidden microphones and the parks and even the wildlife areas in 1984. That's because that style of English socialism is part of the Fabian socialist program that they're generally bringing in everywhere. It's the same as the general communist program. They're Sovietizing the entire world through this police state mechanism, taking away all independence uh, from our business and our personal lives and, and planning just to monitor us all, of course, for our own good. Good. Meanwhile, German authorities have defended and said there's nothing wrong with their spyware that they put onto citizens' computers. Digitask, a private company created for the Bavarian police, a Trojan horse software uh, that's downloaded through innocent looking email, which can do all sorts of spy mechanisms, including. Uh, screenshots remotely adding files, controlling a computer's microphone or webcam to monitor the person's home and more, but authorities insist that's not the reason. Uh, seemingly innocuous email plants malicious spyware on your computer allowing strangers not only to access your private communications, but also to spy on you in your own home. The fact that such invasive technology was deployed by officials in Germany has caused uproar. That's because they have similar privacy laws that are similarly being overridden for supposed security reasons. Ben Franklin, among others, warned that if you trade your liberty for security, you'll end up with neither, and that basically you deserve neither. And that's true here, too. Now, the other part of this is that Alex warned for years how these computer microphones and webcams can be used to monitor in your home can be remotely accessed by law enforcement, by hackers, by whomever to spy on you. People laughed even to this day. They say, what a load of crock. But here it is admitted in this German case, and they've been using this spyware since 2009. There's so much more police state news, but that's all we're covering tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. Alex will be back tomorrow and back in full force on the Marathon 24-plus hour broadcast for the November 3rd Money Bomb. Tune in for free, watch the streams, and you can spread the word and help us build this operation. We rely on your support. Thank you so much, and good night. Our mission at InfoWars.com is to audit the Fed, abolish the Fed, restore the Constitution, abolish the TSA, restore the Second Amendment, restore the Constitution, restore the Republic. And if you believe in those goals, then it is your free will, responsibility, and honor to spread the word about our operation and to donate to the 2011 Money Bomb. For many years, I tried to basically stay small, make my films, do my radio show, but it grew and grew and grew. Think about how a Money Bomb that listeners started four years ago led to us being able to move into this bigger office. A later Money Bomb helped us expand into the empty warehouse next door. And in the last year, we have built the TV studios and put the equipment in 
and are now doing a nightly news show every night at 7 o'clock that we're now beta testing and getting ready for television. Right now going out to members at PrisonPlanet.tv and then reaching millions as it spills out onto YouTube and other systems. Help us go to the next level. Not reaching 15 million a week, but reaching 30, 40, 50 million a week. Our growth curve is exponential, but we need to hit our afterburners and turbocharge. History is happening now. The war for human liberty against total dehumanization is on now. Join us Thursday, November 3rd at Infowars.com. We're going to have a 24-hour plus live transmission with guests and interviews starting at 11 a.m. and running into my next radio show the next day. We're going to have a huge lineup of liberty-loving patriots from all over the world joining us. It's going to be amazing. And this money bomb is going to have a lot of new things added to it that's going to make it even more powerful than past years. So please donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb or simply spread the word about the Money Bomb. Stand with InfoWars.com and my incredible crew and all of our other supporters and help us get the word out even more. The ball is in your court. The rest is up to you. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2011, November 3rd. It kicks off 11 a.m. Visit the website at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb.